Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. This video is the second video in a six part series where I walk through the six steps to professional mix. I don't just explain them, but I actually do them on screen for you. So be sure to check out the first video if you haven't seen that already. I'll link to it right up here. And if you're serious about getting professional sounding mixes in GarageBand, be sure to subscribe. As I mentioned in the first video, the best way to get good at mixing is the same way you get good at anything else. You learn the fundamentals and then you practice them. So I'm gonna be teaching you the fundamentals, the six steps to a pro mix in this video series, but I also wanna go a step further and give you something to practice with. So I'm gonna give you the session that we're using for this video series so you can download it and you can practice these techniques on this exact same session. So download that, there's a link in the description below and then practice these techniques on it. Today we're focusing solely on the master track. Why the master track? Well, because the master track affects every single channel in your mix. So subtle changes on the master track can allow you to do less mixing on the rest of your individual track. So you wanna do it before you actually start throwing plugins and EQ and compression and effects on individual tracks. This is really important, do this first. If you're anything like me, when I started out, I'd mix the whole song and then I'd go to the master track and I'd try to figure out if I could make it sound a little bit better on the master track, flip this do the static mix, and then spend a little time on the master track and use those two tools to get the best sounding mix possible and then start affecting individual channels. Then you have a little less work to do on each individual channel and that's gonna allow you to make more subtle changes that sound more natural and more professional. Professional mixing is all subtle changes. There's no secret to professional mixing. It's the same tools that you use that you have free in GarageBand. It's just about using them in a specific way. And the specific way is largely subtle changes. So sometimes we have to do a little bit more, but in general, we wanna do subtle changes on the master track, subtle changes on the individual tracks. That is the goal, and that's why we wanna do it in this order. The first thing we're gonna do on the master track is EQ. With EQ, we just have two goals, minimize the bad and highlight the good. And we wanna do subtle changes here. So just one to three decibels in boost and cuts. And then we're gonna use just a little bit of compression to glue the mix together. It's just to give it a cohesive sound. We're not trying to smash it, but just some nice subtle glue to the mix. Let's go and dive in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we'll start with the song. So this is the static mix that we finished with in the last video. But you're not so low, yeah, you're not so far. I'm gonna pull up my EQ here. Think you're gone, but you're not so low, yeah, you're not higher. Oh, I'll take you higher, higher. So just a couple tips for how to find the frequencies you want to cut. So we have this channel here. We want to go down uh, and set our cue to be a little bit higher. What that's doing is that's setting it, making it smaller. So a low cue is really wide, a high cue is really narrow. We want our cuts to be pretty narrow and we want our boost to be pretty wide. So we're just gonna kind of scan for frequencies that sound a little bit weird to us and we're gonna cut those just a little bit. Think you go. Take you higher, higher. So a little bit of boxiness right around 500. All right, let's see. Think you go, but you're not so low, yeah, you're not so far away. I've been the one when money's spent and your head's under the way. Just a little bit of brightness that sounds really good on that guitar and on the vocals. Everything there sounds nice with a little bit of that. I'm going to try it in the chorus really quick. Take you higher, higher, oh my love. I like that. Let's see. Higher, higher, oh. But I wanted you to know my Take you higher, higher 
wanted man But I wanted you to know my name Don't push me away, girl I'm not here to save you And you don't need to explain Here I am again A hotel bed in Colorado I'm still waiting for your call But it's not gonna come at all Higher, higher Okay, so the last thing I did there was balance the volume. You wanna do that so you can listen back and decide does it sound better or does it sound louder? You wanna make sure you're listening at the same volume. So notice, at least to me, it sounds kinda of like a blanket was lifted off this mix. It's a little less boxy and it's a little bit brighter. Let's listen to that one more time. I can hear everything a little bit better. The snare pops through a little bit more. Again, this isn't gonna be the last stage of mixing, but it gives us just a little bit of subtle uh, improvement all throughout the mix. So that's all I'm gonna do for EQ. We're gonna leave it there. I might do a little bit more, touch it up a little bit later. I'm also noticing I feel like this vocal is actually a little bit loud. And I gotta say, if your lead vocal is loud, that's a good problem to have. I often find that I'm fighting to get it to cut through exactly how I want. So I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. And that's the nature of this. It's This is still living and breathing. We're playing with all these things. So it's okay to go back, but just don't skip steps in this process. So took the vocal down just a little bit. And now we're gonna do the compression. Now we're gonna glue everything together. So the goal with compression is just very, very subtle. I mentioned in an earlier video on uh, using compression, <laughs> I mentioned in an earlier video on using parallel compression on drums that the compressor's presets actually pull up different voicings of compressors. So they're not just presets that are setting it at specific settings, but it's actually changing the tonal character of the different compressors. So uh, a great use for this is this VCA slow. So a VCA compressor is probably the most common compressor on the bus, on the master track. So I like to use this on my master track. It's a SSL style compressor and just a really subtle uh, amount of it will give us really nice glue on our total mix. So select that. I recommend the VCA slow because it doesn't have auto gain that turns up the volume of the track. Uh, we're actually going to turn this back down to zero and we're going to turn this up so we just get really subtle compression. Um, with compressor on the master track, you want a low ratio. Two to seven is okay. Um, I typically go around two, so I'm actually going to turn this back just a little bit. Uh, we'll start about 2.2. We'll play with that a little bit. And then this attack is a good starting point. I might actually bring it up a little bit. Anywhere from uh, 10 milliseconds or higher is okay. Uh, and then we just are gonna gain it back up to balance out the volume again. We wanna make sure it's the same volume as before. So let's start, I'm actually just gonna loop this chorus because I wanna make sure that what we're compressing is uh, a louder part of the song. So we're just gonna go, I'm gonna loop this last chorus. Uh, let's see. Hi. Okay. And then we're just gonna do some subtle compression on here. So I like to use a second compressor, not this first one, because I get these visual indicators. So you don't wanna do a lot of compression here, just a couple decibels of gain reduction, meaning that the compressor is squeezing down just a little bit on uh, every time it gets turned on. These lights are giving you an indicator. I don't know the exact amount that these lights are indicating, but typically we're looking for one to three uh, lights on, in this setting. Accidentally soloed. All right. So we got the compressor here. Higher, higher. Oh, I'll take you higher, higher. Oh, my love. I'm just bringing the threshold down until higher, you can see a light start to pick on. There we go. Oh, I'll take you higher. So 
subtle compression here. Now you want to listen. Notice that it's a little bit quieter when the compressor's on, so we're going to turn it back up a little bit. I think that sounded really good. So subtle, again, we might play with this a little bit later, but it's a really great starting point. So now we are gluing the, get, the mix together a little bit with the compressor. We have the EQ adding a little bit of clarity and taking away some of the frequencies that were kind of clouding the mix. Let's just go ahead and bypass and turn back on these two things so you can see how they're sounding. on that. It's already sounding a little bit clearer and a little bit punchier. You're getting the drums a little bit more. You're getting the snare a little bit more subtle, but sounding really, really good. Okay, so that's master track processing. You don't want to do more right now. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to overdo this because then you start to squash the mix. You start to make it sound unnatural because you're doing too much EQ. So very subtle changes here. And in the next video, we're going to start applying EQ to individual tracks. We're going to start uh, making space and highlighting the good and minimizing the bad on the individual tracks. Before we go, I want to ask you a question. How do you use the master track? Do you mix the whole song and then go to the master track at the end and try to sweeten what you've already done in the mix? Or do you mix like this where you mix on the master track first? Or are you just not touching the master track at all right now? If that's the case, you definitely need to get on it because it is a huge tool to a professional sounding mix. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to subscribe. I'm back every week with pro-level audio training for GarageBand specifically. And go download this session so you can practice these mixing techniques in this session. See you next week with another video.